Now today is one of the days we're going to set aside to do some maintenance on the fleet. And when you have several motorcycles, there's always one that needs tires or brakes or a chain or, or a tune-up or plugs or something. And I enjoy the work as much as the riding. Now step one would be, for anybody that's riding a motorcycle, well, how often should the brake pads be replaced? Well, you really can't tell by a thing like mileage because each bike is ridden differently. If you ride the bike very aggressively, they're going to wear out quickly. If you use the front brake, which I do more than the back brake, most people tend to use the back brake more than the front brake, so they wear out the pads unevenly, but it's always good to check them. So just some general tips on a bike like the RD, a bike that's light and you don't ride really aggressively, what happens? The pads last a real long time. On a bike like the R1, which has sintered pads, they're pads that are more aggressive, they break harder, but the downside is they wear out the rotors a lot quicker, and rotors are very expensive. And on some bikes, and I know several of my friends, they cruise, they don't do any track days, and they basically are using the back brake 90% of the time. Well, what happens is the front brakes will almost never wear out, and you'll wear out the back brakes. So, but it's always good to check each one. Well, very convenient, a rule of thumb, a very convenient thing is anytime you have the wheels off the bike, it's very convenient to look and see what the brake caliper wear is. And what I happen to have just done is I just have put a set of Michelins on this bike, and I noticed the back pads were ready for replacement, and one side of the front pads is getting ready for replacement. So I thought, I'm not going to fool around, it's the beginning of the summer, I just got a whole new set of pads. Now I've had real good luck with EBC brake pads. Now, there's a thing a lot of people, and I think they make a mistake when they do it, they try to buy racing brake pads. They try to buy, uh, well, what, you know, we all want to be uh, Valentino Rossi or whoever your favorite star is, but the reality is the, the brake pads that are made for street bike riding are the best for street bike riding. The thing you gain is the feel, the feel of the brakes. Now these are normal, high-performance organic pads and EBC. Now I'm sure Luciano will remember this story. When we first did the restoration on the RD, I was middle or winter or whatever it was, and Luciano went out on the uh, eBay. He found some Chinese replacement brake pads. I think they were made out of balsa wood. I'm not sure, but boy, they didn't work at all. And then I went and just bought real EBC pads. Good lesson to learn. Don't, don't skimp on brake. EBC is, I think, worth every penny. Now on the GS, we've already put EBC floating rotors on because we wanted to brake and, and upgrade over to stock brakes. And what had happened is, over the years, the back brake on this bike was very good, never, never wore out anything. And I wore out three sets of rotors already on this when the bike was relatively new. They warped, and I found the, the way to solve the problem it's just by EBC rotors. And I liked them so much that after doing track days with this bike for three or four years and really riding it hard on the street, what would happen is the rotors would warp. I got the EBC floating rotors. They are just perfect. So I'm a big fan of EBC products. So if you know, your pads are worn out. And I do remember one friend of ours on a Ducati, the back, I won't mention any names, the back pad was worn out right into the metal and actually was dangerous. The back wasn't even uh, a usable brake at that point and Luciano and I straightened it out, but it could be dangerous. So brake pads are relatively cheap, but I suggest you not compromise and get real EBC pads. Or right from the factory if you want, or Brembo if you want to spend extra money. Now we'll do the rear brake first. It's relatively easy, relatively straightforward. And a lot of the Japanese bikes of this era, this is an 82 bike, Yamaha, Suzuki, Honda, they're very similar. So we'll go through this step by step. Step one is there's a plastic cover here. This little cover comes right off. This snaps in, snaps out. Basically now you can look in and if you have a little flashlight, if you're doing your inspection when you're not changing tires, you can look in and see what the level of brake pad wear is. The next step is there are two little cotter pins that hold these pins in. You need to pull these pins out carefully, and then these rods will slide out, exposing the brake pads. 
A real handy thing, a little tip worth its weight in gold. These little flashlights that come from Harbor Freight, you can, they have a little hook, you can wedge them up so that you can get to look in there. It's a lot easier to do the cleaning and pulling out these little cotter pins with the little light. And they're, and they're, what's cool is they're free from Harbor Freight when you have a coupon. And everybody has coupons. You know, once that little cotter pin is out, now you can take some needle nose pliers and you just push this rod out little by little by little. This rod will slide out. And obviously you take the other one out and what that's going to do is release the brake pads. Now the old pads slide right up and out and now it's probably a good idea to press. You could do it with a soft piece of wood or something. Push the, push the pucks back in so that the new pads will drop right down. And you can see these have uh, maybe another thousand miles left on them. I don't know. But they're definitely shot. A lot of times you'll notice they don't wear exactly evenly. One will be a little thicker than the other. You have to be careful getting the shims back in right. And there's two little springs that separate the. They work to push pull the pads off the rotor when the brake's not in use. So now what I want to do is get a clean rag. I don't want to, these are a couple things I don't want to do. I don't want to put brake parts cleaner in there and you never blow compressed air in there because that dust that's in there, that dust is usually got some asbestos in it. You don't want to breathe that in. So you just want to clean this with the typical way we clean things with a rag and maybe a little uh, M600 or whatever. Good way to clean this of course is with the thing we call the cleaning stick. It's an already paint stirring stick. It allows you to get down in there get a lot of the brake dust out. Now, I don't use, here's the reason I don't like to use brake parts cleaner on anything around a bike. Number one, it damages the paint. You get any on the wheels, and we spend a lot of time doing these wheels, parts, it can ruin paint. Number two, M600 is real good if you have it. Uh, as simple green is even okay. But to clean as much of the dust and grit out of there, and when I'm all done, I'll wipe the rotors with brake parts cleaner with a rag, a clean rag. I think we're pretty clean. Now we've got to separate these because the new pads are going to be thicker than the old ones. But the thing I don't want to do is get in there with a sharp tool and put a gouge in a rotor. And these are the little springs that that pretty self-explanatory how they, they pull a pad away from the rotor when there's no hydraulic pressure on the brake. I want to clean these up too. Okay, you can see on the shim there's an arrowhead. That arrowhead has to face forward. And there's one on each side, of course. What these are made for, they do two things. They keep the brakes from squeaking. I think they put a little bit of pressure on them, or whatever they do. But you don't want to leave these out. Now, a little tip that'll just make your job easier is get the, this, the outer one in, set the pins in, and that holds the little clip in. Now you can drop the second one in, and as, long as, you, as soon as you get one, these pins have to go over the little clip. So you want to get that, the first one in, otherwise you, you run out of fingers and hands and toes and everything. And make sure that those arrows on the shims are facing forward. Now it's very important to make sure these go in. Because if you forget to put these in, needless to say, you can have all kinds of problems. Now with the cotter pins in, it's a good idea once, once if you're doing one wheel, I got it backwards here I think. Snap right on. Clean any fingerprints or dust off the area. And the rear wheel is done. Now, what I would always do is once I'm done with this, is jack the back of the bike up or if you have a center stand and make sure the pads are running free. Hit the back brake. It's gonna the first couple times you hit the back brake, it's gonna be spongy and soft, or the pedal will go right down. Or because you've moved the pucks away and you've got to put get fluid back in there to squeeze the pucks. Okay, back wheel done, we'll move on to the front. The front are no, no really any more different or difficult than the back ones, but you want to be careful not to get anything out of whack, so I always am very careful about taking the bolts out. The bracket is going to stay on the fork leg. We just want to take the caliper off. I want to carefully slide the caliper back. And sometimes these bolts can be a little snippy to get out because they've got Loctite on them, of course.
The way I do this, and I try to make it easy for myself, I'm always working alone. I have two zip ties holding the caliper up. I'm going to have to squeeze the caliper in because the new pads are going to be thicker. But when you take this part off carefully, usually the back one falls right off, but the brake pads stay right in place, which makes this a very easy change. So now I can, and you don't want this little, this little tin thing to fall out here, but I do want to clean it all up. I do want to clean this up, and I'll take the pads out. Once this is squeezed enough, I'll just be able to put the caliper right back on top. And there's little rubber boots. I want to clean these up. These go in, in these little slots. And very important that as you have this apart, it, it's very easy to clean it. I don't know why I'm making such a big deal out of it. And I'll clean up the bolts. And this, this is really the easier of the two to do. And there's two of them. Now with that cleaned up, the last thing get the new pads and make sure this is plenty squeezed in what's convenient if you have a an old C clamp and a piece of wood you can just push that in nice and easy now another good tip is keep the wheel straight with the motorcycle and what happens gravity works in your favor now to put the pads stay in place while you squeeze over and of course this has to be in far enough and then it's just a question of I'll clean up the two bolts that goes back in, and then we get to do the other side. Now once those bolts are cleaned up, we button up this side, we can do the other side. Now I don't think there's any part of this that's out of the range of doing for a, uh, an average backyard mechanic, which pretty much is what I am. And I wanted to thank Luciano for sharing all the information he's shared with me over the years. Taught me a lot of stuff, it served me well. And I, I do enjoy, as I said before, I do enjoy working on a motorcycles almost as much as riding them. Now the nice thing about doing any of these jobs, the second side goes a lot faster than the first side. And this whole job probably, I'm going to guess, hour and a half maybe. I took a coffee break in the middle of course. And there's really no rush. So we're not going to be able to test ride the bike today. We have our grandson coming over. One, one more tip that every bike I have I go out and get the, the best service manual I can because if you ever run into a problem this is worth its weight in gold or you take something apart and you just don't remember another thing when you're taking a thing apart if it's something you don't do often which this is not a complex job I try to lay the parts out in sequence and then assemble it in the reverse sequence and always clean the parts try not to put everything together that's just as messy as when you took it apart now, a few final thoughts because any brake job of course now you have new surfaces they need to wear in it's a good idea to take it easy for a couple of rides we probably will uh, be gentle on it <clears throat> I don't know that's all relative anyway it would make the life of the pads a little bit better but again I hope now that we've had a, uh, a chance to do this we have new tires new brakes and new oil in the engine boy we're coming up on a great summer so hope you enjoyed the video and learned a lot. Share it. And we have to go get our grandson. So thanks for watching.